only mode. Good morning and welcome to our former board meeting. I understand that uh, Supervisor uh, Hickman will not be present this morning. Okay, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Thank you, good morning. Supervisor Hickman is absent today. Supervisor Galvin is joining us virtually. Supervisor Galvin. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Supervisor Deeds. Thank you. Here. Supervisor Gallardo is running a few minutes late, but he will be here And Chairman Sellers. Here. Thank you. Okay, next we will have the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Vice Chair Galvin. Please introduce your guest. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'm very happy to introduce Michelle Pavis of Scottsdale at Honor Health. And Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, I'd like to make a few comments uh, afterwards, but I appreciate Ms. Pavis for joining us this morning. Okay, would everyone please rise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Supervisor. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Please bow your head and pray with me. Dear wise and loving Lord, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for many and abundant blessings on Maricopa County and its people. As the Board of Supervisors meets today, we ask for your inspiration and insights. We ask for your continued direction and guidance. We ask for your peace and harmony as we work to display an attitude of cooperation and respect. We pray for these public servants meeting today who have heard your call to serve and do so with graciousness and dedication to what is right and just. We pray for our service members around the world who fight for the very freedoms we enjoy here today and ask that you keep them safe. Finally, we pray for our first responders and healthcare workers who care for our community with passion in selflessness every day. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next, we have our Mr. pet Chairman. showcase. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I'm sorry, Tom, yeah, uh, go ahead. If you don't mind, I'd like to say a couple words. Um, first of all, I wanna give an appreciation to Michelle Pappas for joining us this morning. As you can hear from her beautiful prayer that she delivered this morning, that Michelle has provided Scottsdale, and the East Valley and Maricopa County, um, so many years of service and dedicated good uh, impactful service. In fact, Michelle is responsible for developing the advocacy agenda and communicate, community relations strategy for the organization and promoting the interests of the healthcare system at federal, state, and city levels. Michelle has been successful in securing congressional appropriations for Honor Health's military partnership, getting state legislation passed to improve the state trauma system, and championing legislation to reduce regulatory burdens. In addition, Michelle currently serves as board chair for the Scottsdale Area Chamber of Commerce with a focus on serving Scottsdale here in District 2, regional businesses, and community prosperity. And Michelle actively participates in the community as a member of the boards of directors for the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, the Charos Foundation, Community Celebrating Diversity, and Neighborhood Outreach Access to Health. I don't know how she does it with that schedule, um, but we are deeply indebted to Michelle for everything she does for us, and she is definitely one of the points of light in District 2, and we're proud to have her this morning. And Michelle, I just wanna give my personal appreciation and thanks to you, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for the honor, Supervisor Galvin. Really appreciate it. Supervisor Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to add uh, to Supervisor Galvin's comments. Uh, Michelle Pabas has been a great friend of District 3, both Phoenix City Council District 3, as well as Maricopa County District 3 over the years, particularly in the Sunny Slope area. And I'm also very grateful for Michelle's partnership and Honor Health's partnership through all of the health challenges we've had, but particularly uh, during the pandemic. So Michelle, thank you for your words this morning. And I'd like to express my appreciation, Michelle, as well. Thank you. And uh, Vice Chair Galvin, it sounds like you could use some medical assistance. That's right. 
Mr. Sellers. I think I want to consult with Michelle afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Okay, next we have the pet showcase. Uh, Kim, please introduce us to the star of today's pet showcase. Right, so this is Murphy. He is an 11, or sorry, he's a 10 year old potato. 11 pounds, a plump 11 pounds, so he is a little bit chunky, uh, but he was abandoned in front of our parking lot, the West Shelter, last week. So he is looking for a new forever home. He is as sweet as can be. Uh, he's clearly loved by someone at some point. He's a super friendly dog. Uh, he is a senior dog, so he is very chill. He is happiest to be in someone's lap. So if you need a movie buddy, he is the right guy for you. He also might be a good one to watch the Super Bowl with, maybe share your nachos in moderation, of course. He's on a diet, uh, but he is already new so he can go home today and his adoption fee is waived. Today's our first uh, day of the Bissell Empty the Shelters adoption event. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman, Supervisors, I do have a few announcements to make for today's agenda. Under the PNZ hearings, item number five, the bill, and item number seven is Desert Foothills Gardens Nursery. These items are being pulled from consent. Item number 17 is the appointment to the Corrections Officer Retirement Plan Local Board. That item is being withdrawn. And one more announcement. On item number 37, the Precinct Committeemen, the list of the Precinct Committeemen recommended for vacancy is being continued. So the only list that will be cons for consideration today is the list of precinct committeemen recommended for appointments. So okay. the list for recommended for vacancy is being continued. Yes, and that is all I have, thank you. Okay, so items five and seven have been pulled from consent. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items six, eight, and nine? Chairman, Supervisors, I do not have any speaker forms for items six, eight, and nine. I do know that the applicant for item number six, um, Cassandra Ayers, is available to speak only if necessary. That is for item number six. Okay, thank you. The board will now consider item six, eight, and nine. Mr. Chair, I move approval of the planning and zoning consent uh, agenda items six, eight, and nine in accordance with the commission recommendations as printed on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, Madam Clerk, are there registered speakers or comments received on item number five? Chairman, Super Chairman Supervisors, we do not have any speaker forms for item number five, however, Ashley Marsh, the applicant, is available to speak if necessary for item number five. Okay, the board will now consider item number five. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move continuance of agenda item five to the February 28th agenda. This case was previously remanded by the board back to Planning and Zoning Commission. The project has been modified. Supervisor Hickman was unable to attend today and this is in his district and he should have the opportunity to review the project modifications before the board uh, votes on the matter. Okay, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I agree with that motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. Madam Clerk, are there registered speakers or comments received on item number seven? Chairman, Supervisors, Gary Hayes, representing the applicant, is available to speak if necessary. However, we also did receive three speaker forms in opposition. One from Julie Goldammer, she would like to speak in opposition. Beth Osmer would like to speak in opposition. Mike Johnson would like to register his position in opposition. Okay, could we have uh, Darren and Tom come forward, please? And 
Supervisor Gates. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Tom and Darren. Maybe if you could start, we do have some folks here to speak uh, today. Start with a presentation for us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this is zoning case Z202352, known as Desert, Hill, Desert Foothills Garden Nursery uh, in District 3. Uh, the request is specifically for a rezoning from Rural 43 to C2 CUPD on a 5.27 acre parcel, our property located at the northwest corner of Cave Creek Road and Westland Road in the North Phoenix Cave Creek area. Uh, currently, the site's occupied by a um, commercial nursery. It's occupied that site since the, the 90s. It received a special use permit for that commercial use. It's operated under that special use permit through 2022 when it expired. The applicant is requesting to, is seeking uh, a permanent entitlement to the property with the C2 zoning. Um, the CUPD overlay specifically uh, is to address certain concerns, um, but primarily it's prohibiting all of their commercial uses on the property except those associated with the nursery um, and would allow for a, a static, um, non-digital, non-illuminated billboard on the site. Um, <clears throat> we did receive um, opposition. There was opposition at the commission hearing also. Um, what you'll hear from the opposition is primarily um, concerning buffering of the site, screening of the, of the materials on the site, the way the site is operated, particularly in its relationship to, I believe it's 52nd Street to the east, uh, to the west, sorry, I get dyslexic, um, to the west, um, but I'll, I'll, almost a majority of opposition has it been expressed in relation to the signage on the site, and particularly the use of the billboard. Um, this is in the Phoenix planning area. The city of Phoenix was notified. We did not receive comment from Phoenix. At the commission hearing, we did hear from the town of Cave Creek. They also expressed concerns regarding the billboard and, and requested that the town of Queen Creek's design standards related to signage be applied to the site. Um, with that, um, it was heard by the PNZ Commission at the January 11th hearing with a vote and it was recommended for approval with a vote of eight to zero. Take any questions you have. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, would you like to call up the first speaker? Oh, Mr. Chair, could I just, rec I just had one question, um, first for staff and then, uh, so um, Tom, just a question on that. Uh, you had referenced Phoenix and, and Cave Creek as well. Whose planning area is this in? This is in the city of Phoenix, city of Phoenix planning area. Okay, all right. Um, Mr. Chair, if it'd be all right, uh, I'd, like to, um, uh, I'd like to hear from the opposition first. I've had the opportunity to go out and visit with them. Um, I, I heard that Ms. Goldhammer's here. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come out there and visit the site. I think that's very important. Um, and so appreciate them coming, coming down here. Um, to uh, voice their concerns today. So with that, I'll... Thank you. Thank you. First speaker, Ms. Julie Goldhammer. Thank you, Chairman Sellers, uh, Supervisor Gates, and other esteemed um, supervisors. I just would like to spend a couple minutes, as, uh, I'll be brief. Um, I, I'm here representing my neighbors. There are several dozen of us. We didn't all wanna come down here like crazies and speak at you, so I am carrying the weight of all this and I, I really wanna do a good job. Uh, the history of this is important. This was part of a larger, it is a larger parcel that is being split into two. Uh, the northern part of the parcel you voted on last month, it is being, um, uh, bought by Toy Barn Development, and we worked very well with that uh, applicant, as neighbors should do uh, with applicants. It was not a contentious um, uh, uh, situation. We are, um, came to some concessions with that um, with that group, so that uh, we could 
live with some of the stipulations and they actually self-limited and uh, provided all of that in their CUPD, restricting things like building height and screening and all of the items that the planning team um, helped along uh, with them. Um, I live at the um, west side, the north side of the parcel there if you look. I apologize, I brought a PowerPoint and I wasn't allowed to use it because I didn't give enough information. The roads on either side of the parcel are Cave Creek jurisdiction. Um, that would include Cave Creek Road down to Westland there and also 52nd Street. Cave Creek's uh, commercial ordinance sets a maximum height of 12 feet and 48 square feet of signage space, so they're monument signs. On the north side, closest to Carefree Highway, you will note that there are actually um, Burger King, Walmart, and the signs are just barely taller than me. They're hidden between Palo Verde and um, there isn't any lit signage there. Um, on the other side, we have Chevron, Dutch Brothers, and Tractor Supply, and um, all of those are obviously large franchises and or national brands, and they have complied with the Cave Creek uh, C2 uh, related intermediate commercial signage ordinance. Um, we have tried to live with the uh, neighbor. Um, we actually had a meeting at my home and we helped him get this property sold, the north part of his parcel. He knew what our concerns were. He knew we did not want certain things, including billboards. We asked him specifically, uh, would he put a billboard up? He said no, he wouldn't. And then we were very surprised when his uh, rezoning application came in. Um, he started out being a, a special use permit renewal, and then he came forth and um, wanted to turn it into a C2, and he asked for several things. Um, the attorney will come up and tell you that they worked with us as neighbors, but they did not. Um, they came up and um, basically at the 11th hour dropped a couple of items that I believe were sacrificial items that they didn't intend to ever ask so that they could protect the billboard. Um, I am asking kindly that you consider the fact that Cave Creek is an important part of Maricopa County. We bring lots of tourism. It's built on the Western heritage and our mining heritage and the views and um, views up to the mountains are so important for that. If large national brands and franchises can live without billboards up there, because we have no other billboards in that area or in town, um, I believe that also the applicant can uh, comply with that. This owner has been there with his special use permit, living on a residential property pri prior to moving away and having his business run there. He hasn't needed a billboard in over 30 years. I don't know why he needs one now. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, and Madam Clerk, I, I know that we are going to have a number of speakers today, so we should remind people we have a two-minute time limit for each speaker. Thank you. Next, next speaker, Beth Osmer in opposition. I'll be brief. Uh, good morning, Supervisor Gates. Thank you for coming to our neighborhood and taking the time to see where we live. So a lot of these decisions are made from behind a desk and no one gets to actually see how we live. So thank you very, very much. And as you saw, I don't need to go over the facts. I was talking to my husband. He's like, Beth, stick to the facts. Stick to the facts. You know all the facts. The signage is 12 feet everywhere. His property, you could go like this and you're in Cave Creek. You go like this, you're in Phoenix. When we were here at the other zoning, planning and zoning, the biggest thing everyone said when they voted yes was this is we can't impede progress. Hmm. How the hell is a billboard progress? It's not. <laughs> it benefits one man and affects an entire town. That is not progress, that is greed. That is flat, out greed. The half of town council, the vice mayor, came to see Supervisor Gates. This is how important this billboard is. Now you may think, it's just a billboard, what's the big deal? I work with people for a living. I work with people with trauma who have been through major things. Something as simple as a billboard may seem like benign, but it's not. It means people are powerless. It means the big man wins, always. Always, so do the right thing, vote no, this is not progress, this is greed, and it's gonna benefit 
one man and affect an entire town. Thank you. Chairman, I have no other request to speak. The only other form I have is from Mike Johnson and he wishes to register his position in opposition. Okay, Supervisor Gates, anything further? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to have uh, the applicant representative, Mr. Hayes, if you could uh, come up uh, and join us. Um, uh, I First of all, do you have any, do you have a statement that you'd like to make first? And then I do have some questions based upon some of the comments. Sure. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For your records, Gary Hayes, 2198 East Camelback in Phoenix. I, I am pinch hitting for uh, Jessica Sarkissigan. She is in Pinal County, but uh, I'm well up to speed on the, the facts and, and did this at PNZ as well. So I think it's important to remember a couple of things. And Tom did a great job telling you how we got here. But one of the things that I think Tom didn't really get into detail is how did we get exactly to this point today? So there was a neighborhood meeting held, one person showed up, really no issues. That person said, okay, I'm fine. So as we started going through this process, there were concerns raised by the community. First concern was no multifamily, no issue there. Never was a request for multifamily never was anything to do with multifamily C2. Second concern was no gas station, propane or butane sales, which was initially requested. Okay, we'll, we'll take that out of the uh, actual uses. Next concern was no cell tower. There was some discussion because there are people in this area and I'm familiar with this that need some cell coverage, but the owner said, okay, no cell tower. So then the third concern or fourth concern was our dark skies are very important to us. And I, I'm very familiar with this area. I know dark skies are very important to us. No illuminated billboard. Billboards that light up the sky are not good in this area. There was lots of discussion and they said, okay, no illuminated billboard. Then it was, because 40 feet is allowed by right for billboards. Well, this area, everything's really short. Toy barn next door is 28 feet. So then the billboard got moved to 28 feet to match the size of the building next door. Now it's no billboard. So we've kind of gone down this process of, well, not this, not this. And I think that the owner and the applicant have tried to work with everybody to get to a spot that could work for the community as well as the owner. And I think that's where we are today. And I'd like to actually, I should have done this earlier, thank staff, District 3 staff. Do I get to keep going, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Okay. So I'd like to thank staff from District 3 as well as County PND to get to this spot today where we are. That's all I have. Okay, no, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and thanks for working with, uh, with the staff here at, at Maricopa County. I appreciate the statement that there's not gonna be any illumination at all on this. Yes. That's very important. Uh, when I went out um, and met with the neighbors, there were concern, a few concerns that were raised, so I'd like to ask you about it. First of all, there were um, concerns raised about employees and others parking along 32nd Street. 52nd Street. I'm sorry, 52nd Street. Um, do, will your uh, client agree to prohibit employee parking there along 52nd Street? Uh, through the chair, Supervisor Gates, yes. And, and that's part of what going through this process. When you get a plan of development, you have to show where the parking will actually be. And so there has currently in the past been parking on 52nd Street. But with this, if the Board of Supervisors approve this, there will actually be spots of this is where the parking will have to be. And so there will no longer be street parking on 52nd Street. Um, one of the other items that was raised when I went out there and visited was that toy barn, which is directly to the north. Um, is going to include uh, some things to um, uh, ameliorate the impact on the neighborhood, um, including a 58-foot building setback along 52nd Street, as well as a 20-foot landscape buffer. Um, is that, are those conditions that uh, your client would agree to as well? Uh, through the chair, Supervisor Gage. You know, uh, I went and looked at what Toy Barn had done because everybody keeps talking about it, and I kind of, Thought this might be a concern. It might be want to look uniform along the back. So I've already checked, no issues. 
They're okay. fine with that. I, th I think that's I think that's very important along there. Um, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Hayes. I appreciate uh, your responses to those questions. Um, this is a you know this is a tough case. Billboards are something that I have been very focused on the impact that they have on neighborhoods over the years, both at the city council, unless, Mr. Chair, unless anyone else has a question for Mr. Hayes. Any other questions? I don't mind staying here, but I'll sit down okay. if you need me. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I, I understand the impact that this can have on neighborhoods, and it's something that, that I've been focused on over my years in elected office. Um, I appreciate those concerns. I, I took a look at the impact that this billboard would have along the, the road there, and um, I don't see that it has an impact directly on the, for, for example, the views of the mountains, et cetera. It doesn't have a direct impact on the view from the, the folks in the area there, but I, I certainly a, a appreciate the concerns that you raised that we discussed. I'm uh, pleased that these this will not be a lit billboard. I'm pleased that the applicant has agreed to make these changes in the back, which will improve the appearance along 52nd Street. Um, and, and I do uh, appreciate the fact that Planning and Zoning had the opportunity to review this. They did have a unanimous approval, as well as staff uh, recommending approval on this. So uh, based upon all of those facts, uh, I move approval of Agenda 7 in accordance with the uh, uh, ruling of the uh, Decision of Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, which is printed on the agenda. The conditions, as we talked about, the conditions of approval will limit lighting and structure heights, as well as limit entitled uses, including a prohibition on illuminated billboards. Um, additionally, as we just discussed, my motion does include an additional condition D7, that there shall be a 58-foot setback from the 52nd Street line. Uh, within this required setback, there shall be no parking, and there shall be a minimum 20-foot landscape buffer along 52nd Street containing 36-inch box trees every 20 uh, feet on center and shrubs or cactus every 10 feet on center. Again, I want to thank the neighbors for working with my office. I want to thank the applicant for working uh, with our office uh, as well. So that is my motion, Mr. Chair. We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second that motion and express my appreciation to Supervisor Gates for his thoughtful consideration on this case. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to cut off accepting speaker forms now. I, I believe everyone should have had an opportunity. Last one. Okay, moving on to statutory hearings, clerk of the board. Item number nine, new license application for high Thai high restaurant, 11 through 15, de-annexations from city of Glendale as listed on the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any speakers or comments received on items 10 through 15? Chairman, supervisors, I do have one speaker form from James Arledge on item number 10, the new license application, and he registered to speak only if necessary in favor. Thank you. Okay, the board will now consider items 10 through 15. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 10 through 15. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Continuing under statutory hearings, transportation, <clears throat> excuse me, 16A, rescind road file number A538, 16B through 9, road files as listed on the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on item 16? Chairman, I have none for these items. The board will now consider item 16A through D. 
Move approval of item 16A through D. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under County Officers, Board of Supervisors, item 17, appointment to the Corrections Officer Retirement Plan Local Board and to the Public Safety Personnel Retirement Systems Local Boards. Chairman, excuse me, item 17 um, has been withdrawn. Oh, sorry about that. Mr. Chairman, I will move approval of item 18 through 24. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Clerk of the Court, item 25, accept funds from Arizona Department of Economic Security. Recorder, item 26, fiscal year 2024 budget adjustment. Sheriff, item 27, one-time addition to fleet. Item 28, com competition impractical contact with Kenneth Holmes. The board will now consider items 25 through 28. Mr. Chairman, I will move approval of items 25, 26, 27, and 28. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. <clears throat> Under judicial branch, adult probation, item 29, permanent additions to the fleet, Superior Court, item 30, personnel agenda for the judicial branch. The board will now consider items 29 and 30. Move approval of items 29 and 30. Have a motion? I'll second that motion. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county management, Assistant County Manager, item 31, resignation and appointment of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board members. Chairman, I have two speakers, or two speakers, or two requests to speak. Item 31, Leslie Shepard, also on item 31, in opposition, Nancy Wilming. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this right here says that you're gonna accept the appointment of a nomination for Heather Carter in the, ed in the education and training category of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board. I'm gonna give you these reasons why you shouldn't, but then we already know you're not listening. You know, we come here thinking that we're speaking to people that represent a party, you do. It's called the Uniparty. You vote in lockstep. I always put Steve Gallargo's name at the very top of the list because if we do it alphabetically, he's at the top with the last name. And I notice that every single one of you guys vote right alongside of him. It's very inter interesting uniparty setup you got going on here. Okay, Heather Carter's husband was recently caught removing and storing conservative candidate uh, political signs in their house, which uh, Heather Carter knew was happening. Heather Carter, Carter is part of the pro tyranny caucus, and the voter res, and the and the voter resoundingly rejected her. She is a corrupt individual who should have no political power or authority, especially in the workforce development board. She also was spotted at seasons 52 yelling about the education infrastructure in Arizona, so the entire restaurant could hear the entire conversation. Heather Car Carter is not fit for the political power that you're about ready to say yay, 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 yay to. We already know it's coming. I just wish we should ask you from now on, always oh, Steve, let's start with Steve, and we'll just see everybody fall right in suit. You know, one of the things you did just now was there was some slips getting to, trying to be turned in. I'm glad that you allowed uh, two different people to turn in their slips. On your policy, it says that until the agenda item is called, you have up until that time to turn in your slip. We need you guys to start sticking to at least your own policies. We know you don't respect the law, but at least try to attempt to do it here. Thank you. Ms. Nancy Wilming. No. The board will now consider item 31. Uh, Mr. Chair, move approval of item 31 with comment. Okay. We have a motion. I'll second. And a second. 
Supervisor Th Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, um, one of the parts of item 31 here is accepting the resignation of Darcy Renfro, who served on the Workforce Development Board. Many of us knew Darcy. She was a great leader in our community on many issues, uh, including workforce development, and, and unfortunately we lost a Darcy last year. So uh, just a reminder of the incredible impact that she had on the community. Another person who's had a great impact on this community who I've worked with for many years is Heather Carter, and I'm proud to vote in favor of her. I don't know anything about the, the statements that were made uh, about her, uh, uh, but I feel that it's important that I, that I speak up. Uh, she is a Republican, uh, many years Republican elected official. You know, uh, we, we hear murmurs out in the crowd, which is normal because the some of the people who come here don't respect the rules. Uh, uh, and and the rules here are that we have some sort of decorum here. And Heather Carter uh, is someone I'm very proud uh, to have known for many years who's had a great impact on this community. And she doesn't have to do this. She's got a lot going on. She works for Maricopa County Community Colleges, and I'm grateful. Uh, that she has volunteered to do this work in addition to also serving on the uh, public safety uh, committee that was recently formed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion aye. carries. Okay, under county officers and departments, air quality. 32, amend license agreement with Arizona Center. 33, amend access agreement for air quality monitors at Fire Station 31. Item 34, agreement with U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Under correctional health, item 35, amend agreement with community medical services. Item 36, MOU with Mercy Care. Item, uh, under elections, item 37, precinct committeeman. Madam Clerk. Chairman, I do have some speaker forms. I have a speaker form from Blue Crawley to speak on item 33. Looks like item 33 and 34 and 37. And a speaker form from Ray Michaels to speak on item 37 as well. <coughs> so Blue Crawley item 33 and 34 and 37. And I, I, before you start, Blue, I will remind everyone that we did have a statement from the clerk about item 37, I believe, before we started. Right. <coughs> I'm going to try to do both of them quick and to the succinct. On the agreement with the Environmental Protection Agency, that's for diesel limiting uh, and the air quality. And with the MAG RPTA plan, one of the things that they have in there is to uh, change our buses from fossil fuel to the other. And also, there's a part in there for bus park, or not bus, but for truck parking, so that instead of them spewing, riding around trying to get the thing done, they can park and then go from there. As to the air quality monitor and that, there's that little document I've been showing you all along that says these are the things you were going to do and some of the ones you didn't. One of those roadways is uh, Litchfield. That was supposed to be addressed last year. And then going forward in the MAG RPTA plan, zero. So how are you actually trying to deal with the air quality? Because it's not MAG, the Maricopa County Association of Governments, it's Maricopa County, that when the buck stops, it's right in your lap and they're saying, what are you doing? And what you say is, well, we're doing it over here. Well, when I look at that Litchfield Road and being told that no money, I go, wait a minute, what of those jurisdictions would be the county that has a third of that property? Interesting. Why didn't we get it done? See you at 37. Thank you, Blue. Blue, if you would like to stay and speak on item 37. <laughs> this past Monday, 
there was a Zoom call for District 5's precinct committeemen to pick two individuals to uh, participate. It went off without a hitch other than me not being able to get my illiterate um, technology skills to work that I could have been a participant in it, but quoting from Politics Unplugged this last week, they pointed out that we have a very deep bench in District 5. Oh, yeah, and they were Democrats, and they could get the job done. Thank you for your time. Oh, and thank you, uh, Bill, because I, I got information from your office to get myself moving to where I could have been thought of, but we'll go from there. Being a Nepo, I thought it just happened easily. We have Ray Michaels who would like to speak on item 37. On January 27, 2023, the AZ GOP circumvented state statute by illegitimately electing Gina Swoboda as chair. According to ARS 16821 b to, the, to be eligible for this position, Ms. Swoboda must be a precinct and state committeeman in the district she actually resides. Ms. Swoboda was incorrectly credentialed in LD8 when she actually resides in LD4. This is in direct conflict with ARS 16825 point zero one a which states vacancies shall exist when a member moves from the legislative district from which elected and B shall be filled by a person who resides in the same district in which the vacancy occurred the archived meeting minutes of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors reveal that Ms. Woboda resigned her PC and SC position in LD8 on March 15th and again on April 26 2023 subsequently Ms. Woboda moved to North Scottsdale and was appointed in LD4 by the BOS on April 26, 2023. This firmly established her current residence, residency in LD4 from April 26, 2023 until today. Now on today's agenda, there is a special request for Ms. Swoboda to vacate her current position in LD4. Once vacated, she will no longer be a PC or an SC in the state of Arizona. In the capacity of LD8 chair, I can testify that no application for Ms. Swoboda, her appointment was submitted as required by ARS 16821B, which states the vacancy shall be filled by the Board of Supervisors from a list of names submitted by the county chairman. Therefore, Ms. Swoboda was never appointed in LD8, thus invalidating the credentialing and making her ineligible to be elected as AZ GOP chair. Maxims of Law 62C C states, things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by any subsequent act. For that reason, Ms. Swoboda was and continues to be ineligible as the chair of the AZ GOP. Any further speakers? No more speakers. The board will now consider items 32 through 37. You want to go ahead? Yeah. All right, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I make the motion that we uh, approve items 30 through, through 37. On item 37 is amended as indicated by the clerk at the beginning of the meeting. I think it's the withdrawal of the, the which part will we will continue the oh, list okay. of PCs recommended for vacancy as stated by the clerk <laughs> second is that okay okay we have a motion and a second any further discussion all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed that motion carries under emergency management 38 through 40 grants funds from Arizona State Department of Homeland Security, Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs. Item 41, <clears throat> Maricopa County Emergency Operations Plan. Item 42, MOU with City of Surprise for securing the city's jurisdictional partners. Under finance, 43, no objection letter from Foreign Trade Zone for Funco LLC. Item 44, funds transfer warrants. 
Chairman, I have two speaker forms. One is from Leslie Shepard to speak on item number 41, and Nancy Wilming also to speak on item 41 in opposition. Okay, so this is the emergency operations plan. Uh, so what you guys are gonna determine who's, is who's in charge when emergency comes. It says, while, the, while this does give the cities and towns with, uh, who entered the agreement with Maricopa for emergency operations plan oversight, there's a fear of the possibility of bureaucracy created in this type of contract. If an emergency were to happen, will this contract prevent the cities and the towns from responding immediately how it desires, or will the cities and the towns have the call to uh, have to call Maricopa County before they take action? So, um, the document appear, uh, makes it appear that the Maricopa County would be the one in charge to call the shots on how to respond to the emergency. One natural emergency listed in the, in the document is high winds and thunderstorms. Wow. At what point is it considered an emergency? Someone afraid of storms could be put in charge of this program and we would be locked down for, uh, uh, for something pretty minor. We th uh, the thought of Maricopa County being in charge of this disaster is a disaster itself. Now, I just heard you say, and I think it was number, no, number five earlier, I think uh, one of you two, I think it was Bill, brought it to our attention that Clint Hickman wasn't here, so he wasn't able to overlook that one specific items and then you guys passed it along. So what I do know is that you did make it clear in this meeting that you have that ability. You don't have to vote in lockstep, yay, 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 yay. You can just say, hey, maybe we should check into this a little bit more before we pass something so severe. It also lets me know that if Clint Hickman wasn't here today, and that's why you didn't pass it, you guys pretty much don't know what's going on when you get up there. Because if you're looking at it just today and you're making major decisions, that lets us know a little bit more. So we'll hear who makes the motion, who seconds the motion, and how many of you go, yay, 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 yay. Nancy Wilming? No? Okay, she would not like to speak. Thank you. Okay, the board will now consider items 38 through 44. Mr. Chair, move approval of items 38 through 44. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under human resources, item 45, personnel agenda. <laughs> item 46, market ranges. 47, Maricopa County Employee Leave Policy Revision. Under Human Services, items 48 through 52, amend IGAs and agreements with Arizona Department of Economic Security, Chandler Unified School District, Tempe Elementary School District number three, and City of Tempe, Robin Schaefer Consulting LLC, Guadalupe Community Development Corporation. Item 53, Receipt of funds from Arizona Department of Education. Item 54, license agreement with ABOR E and T LLC. Madam Clerk. Chairman, I have two speaker forms from Leslie Shepard. She would like to speak on item number 51, the amendment to agreement with Robin Schaefer Consulting and item number 52, amendment to agreement with Guadalupe Community Development Corporation. Same for Nancy Wilming for both items 51 and 52, if she wishes to speak. Okay, number 51 is the amendment to agreement with Robin Schaefer Consulting, LLC. It's to approve a non-official amendment, number four, the agreement between Robin Schaefer Consulting, LLC, administered by its Human Services Department. The purpose of the agreement is to create and implement a nurse workforce practice readiness program for senior nursing students ensuring successfully transition to the workforce. <coughs> In May of 2023, Maricopa County released, now this is my point about it. In May 2023, Maricopa County released an article titled Nurse Practice Readiness Program. In this article, it says, the program is, to, is aimed to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion, but not apply to students. Every time I hear diversity, equity, and inclusion, I hear garbage, unqualified racism. That's what I hear. 
So when I hear this is the reason for this, I already know this is a woke issue. Mm. You know, Mr. Gates, you said a moment ago that we need to follow decorum and rule, but yet, why are you limiting when people can walk in this door and turn in agenda items that they can speak on based on their work schedule when your own policy says that until it's announced, you can turn in a form, but you don't even follow your own policy and you don't even have your own decorum for it. So please, do not preach to us until you start living it because we already see that you're half cocked. We already know that you're not telling the truth. When that gentleman came at the last meeting and said how in debt our, our state is, you sat there, no, with your little smile, just like you did when you certified the fraudulent election. We know and we see you. Please stop giving double standards. Okay, this one is the amendment to agreement with Guadalupe Community um, Development Corporation. Well, the agreement funding the amount shall increase from 150, let's see, one comma zero five three zero comma five nine five point nine seven two. just bump it up with a one, I mean, 300,000 more. This is our money. You guys sit up there, we can have people, these people we're talking about that were here earlier, we're talking about what's happening in their district. A guy that didn't even live came up and spoke on behalf of it and you had your two little stack guys there and you guys passed it like it was hotcakes. So I guess what I'm saying is you guys are failing to follow your own decorum. Your decorum Chair, is to uh, follow the Leslie constitution. The constitution the says that you're supposed to make choices that align with protecting and serving the betterment of we the people. So yes, it does apply. I know that's hard for you to understand, Bill, because it doesn't fit in your category. But when you are going against the people, you are not following decorum and you're not following policy. So you should not do this. This program should not exist. And the government should not be the bank. The government picking the winners and losers of who shall be able to afford um, economic housing. Again, who are you guys to make that decision? You can't even make decisions that are according to the Constitution. We are, the, we are on the verge of a major economic downturn and giving people who cannot afford to buy a house money to buy a house is literally insane and asking for a housing crisis. Thank you, President Biden, for ushering in millions of new homeowners who cannot afford housing to artificially inflate housing costs for those who should be buying homes. Thank you. I will remind everyone that if your goal is to be disruptive in this meeting, I will have you removed. Ms. Nancy Wilming, do you wish to speak? Thank you. No other speaker forms, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items number 45 through 54. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under medical examiner, item 55, independent contractor agreement with Dr. Thomas Coy. Under parks and recreation, item 56, amend joint program and marketing agreement with Santan Shredders, LLC. Under planning and development, item 57, white tank vistas, subdivision, assurance agreement and resolution. Item 58, plan review, consultant budget ad adjustment under procurement services, item 59, master planning services for regional county parks, item 60, investment advisory services, item 61, record request, legal holds, preservation, and e-discovery system. Madam Clerk. Chairman, two speaker forms <clears throat> from Nancy Wilming to speak on item 60 in opposition and Leslie Shepard to also speak on number Item number 60, Nancy Wilming, do you wish to speak? Thank you. Leslie Shepard, item number 60. Okay, as you said, this is the investment advisory services. 
approve the contract for the award between Maricopa County and Sage View Advisory LLC with the funds to be paid out from the county's plan at the estimated cost of $100,000 to be paid through county plan assets. Lots of money, lots of our money going on here. As you go, yay, 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 it's our money. Okay, Sage View has a site specifically dedicated to investing with your heart, which outlines social impact of investing is, is, uh, is just as important, perhaps more important than return on investment. This entire page is dedicated completely to investment. I would give it to you, but I don't think you're gonna look it up. Okay, another one is the, um, another page dedicated to ESG investment depicts windmills at the top of the page and outlines the impact. Again, this is all stuff that, a lot of this stuff that you guys are literally going to take our taxpayer dollars and you're gonna approve right now. Again, it's always a wager on who's gonna uh, uh, make a motion. I'm never ever shocked that, um, I mean, usually it's Steve not here, but you know, Galvin has a habit of being sick. Maybe I should get him, uh, I'll send him a little something so he can get a little better, but, um, you know, we can't, we can't talk in the public speaking part that's coming up here, unless we're here. I would appreciate that when public speaking begins, the people that can't be here, like Hickman and, and Galvin, they don't get to talk. They get cut off, just like we the people would. You need to stop your double standards. You are not above us, you're public servants. And don't say that I'm being belligerent because I'm speaking truth. If you can't handle the truth, you're happy, we're happy to accept your resignations. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 55 through 61. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under public defense, item 62, data sharing agreement with Arizona Department of Economic Security. Under public health, item 63, agreement with Phoenix Children's Hospital. Item 64 through 65, amend contract and IGAs with Dental, Delta Dental Plan of Arizona and Arizona Department of Health Services. Item 66, contracts for implementation of Ryan White Services. Item 67, <coughs> MOU with Area Agency on Aging, HIV, Care Directions. Item 68, resignation from Ryan White, Ryan White Planning Council. Chairman, I have two speaker forms from Nancy Wilming to speak on item, item number 65, which is the amendment to IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services in opposition, and Leslie Shepard to also speak on item number 65. Nancy Wilming, do you wish to speak? Leslie Shepard, item number 65. <clears throat> okay, this is, this is, is it on? This amendment to the IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services for COVID-19 vaccination. The agreement is extended through 6-30-2025. Okay, a moment ago, you guys passed on doing something because someone wasn't here to view it. We know that you're not viewing these things. You just gave that information up. We love when you talk. You share a lot of information whether you know it or not. You are now making a decision to, to bring something in effect that's clear out to 6-30-2025 for COVID I don't think you understand that people have been being paid out in courts. Just because the media doesn't show it doesn't mean it's not, it's not happening. People are making serious money for the injuries that have happened from these shots. And they've also identified in other countries that they've never ever isolated a specimen of it. And yet you're sitting here about ready to pass something that is gonna be extended out to 6-30-2025 how about you give me directions how to drive to, the Mar to drive to Mars? You can't. You know why? Because it doesn't exist. You wouldn't know how to give it to me. And the same thing for this. For you guys to pass something regarding another COVID-19 vaccinations, you guys are part, and you're gonna be in trouble. You're part of harming people when you make these decisions. COVID shots are killing people and changing their lives in a very negative, 
way. And you, as you vote yay today, just keep it in mind, you're gonna be responsible one day. The Nuremberg Code, the Nuremberg Trials, keep it in mind. The board will now consider item 62 through 68. Mr. Chair, move approval of item 62 through 68. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under real estate, item 69, site-specific supplemental agreement. Transportation, item 70, bid and award for phase two of the road improvement project. Item 71, change in traffic controls. Item 72, IGA with City of Phoenix. Item 73 through 81, transfer of county right-of-ways as listed on the agenda. Item 82, competition impracticable to consultant services contract with WSP USA Inc. Item 83, Value Utilities Water Company Incorporated Agreement. Item 84, Easement Right-of-Way and Relocation Assistance Documents. Chairman, I have a speaker form. Blue Crawley wishes to speak on item number 76, which is a transfer of county right-of-way to the city of Glendale. Could I borrow your... Uh... That was 76. Item right? number 76. You'll note that that right of way is Litchfield Road. Interesting. Like I said, uh, there was supposed to be a route on Litchfield Road running from, I believe it was the airport in Goodyear all the way to R.H. Johnson. How much of that is county, gentlemen? Um, when I ask, like I said, why isn't it being funded? And it's the only thing that was to be additioned last year. No money. Well, where did that money go to the rail or to the rail security? You know, because uh, it also has that uh, in my little documents here from the last board of meeting that uh, the most important thing to the Valley Metro system is security. And we spend how much on bus security? Zero. But you want to add $54 million to double the amount of Gestapo agents that we're gonna have checking IDs and uh, trespassing and making sure you don't get up there and take a drink of water. Uh, we have a problem coming up in uh, the summer. If we have another over 92 degree amount of days, there is no reason that the system, both the bus and the rail, can't help these people lessen their hostilities of environment Thank you, Blue. and be able to get a drink of water and out of the sun. The board will now consider item 69 through 84. Mr. Chairman, I move approval item 69 through 84. Uh, second with the comment on uh, 71. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Supervisor Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 71 is a change in the intersection uh, out in District 3 at New River Road and I-17 Frontage Road. So it's changing it from a one-way stop to an all-way stop. I want to thank um, McDot for their work on this and uh, safety out there on the roads is, is very important. So thanks for their work on this and happy to vote in favor of it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, setting of hearings. Under clerk of the board, 85. Submitted petitions to form Grove Park Estates Irrigation Water Delivery District. 
under Planning and Development 86, Planning and Zoning Setting of Hearings. The board will now consider items 85 and 86. Move approval of items 85 and 86. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under consent agenda, items 87 and 88, property reclassification appeals for denial and approvals. Item 89, duplicate warrants. The board will now consider items 87 through 89. Move approval of items 87 through 89. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Board of Supervisors Addendum, Transportation, Item 90, Settlement of Maricopa County versus Donald T. Shields et al. Under County Attorney, 91, Authorized Litigation for Air Quality Violations. The Board will now consider Items 90 and 91. Move approval of items 90 and 91 with brief comment. I will second it, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 91 is to authorize litigation for air quality violations. I just want to thank the Maricopa County Attorney's Office and the Air Quality Department for their work on this. Um, we, we try and work with people. Uh, we, we understand, you know, the people out in our community who may run afoul of the law, but when they continue to do this, particularly in the area of air quality, is very important. One of the responsibilities of this board, that's why we're moving forward with this, and just want to thank everyone who's involved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Flood Control District, we will recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Under Flood Control District, item 92, personnel agenda, item 93, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. The Board will now consider items 92 and 93. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 92 and 93. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. Under Library District, we have item 94, <clears throat> excuse me, donations, item 95, personnel agenda. The board will now consider items 94 and 95. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Item 96, public comment. Madam Clerk, do we have anything to report regarding public comment email responses? Chairman, we did, we did receive several email comments in regards to several agenda items on today's agenda. All of these comments have been shared with the board offices. And I do have in my hand approximately 20 uh, requests to speak for public comment, and I will bring these to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, first up, and I will remind everyone there is a two minute limit. Uh, first up is Florence Smith, and next will be Christina Tyler. Um, this is video someone took of the machines of the 2022 election. In the 10 minute and 53 um, second segment, five ballots were accepted and 53 ba um, there were 53 rejections. The accepted ones are noted by a ding and the rejected ones are by the buzz. 
My husband and I were in line to vote at quarter to six in the morning, and the, there was already machines that were non-functioning at that time. Since the machines weren't accepting ballots, there were long lines of people. Many people were in line after 7 p.m. We the People organization documented that at 13 locations, th there were um, 2,572 people that were unable to vote. And they um, extrapolated this to um, 40 locations, um, saying that there was 8,327 citizens who couldn't vote. I don't think we would have these kind of lines if we had hand-counted ballots rather than using machines. There are organizations like causeofamerica.org who have worked on accurate and speedy hand counts, and they have worked out systems that make hand counting a precise and quicker option. Um, the best practices chain of custody were not followed. Um, 298,000 election day drop-off ballots lacked chain of custody. No counts were completed prior to surrendering the ballots to Runback. Runback scanned 35,000 more ballot envelopes than they reported receiving. Um, a, a, a whistleblower stated that Runback employees could inject ballots into the system. Um, there was big. Si uh, um, Thank you, Florence. This is the um, signature verification where there are great big issues also. Okay, Christina Tyler, and then next will be Tom Arnold. Hello. So today I'm here to follow up with the conversation that I had started um, the last time. So the thing is, is that one of the counters that was actually thrown at me from um, the manager from county is that dogs are not euthanized at the shelter on December 24th and the 31st. Um, I did send also photographic uh, evidence of how you guys actually put dogs on the portal for the 23rd, and also even uh, emails directly from Kyle, who's the volunteer coordinator, who even said um, how 23rd basically gets euthanized to 24th, 24th, uh, the 26th, uh, 5 a.m. that morning, uh, 30th, the 31st, 30th for the 31st, 31st for the 2nd. Um, and also, and basically the thing is, is that you guys, if rescues do not pull on those days, you guys would euthanize. The rescues did pull. Um, what happened was, is I had put all over social media, trying to get different fosters to pull, um, or for rescues to line up for, for and to get fosters lined up to be able to pull animals that were set for euthanasia on the 24th, which would have been euthanized the 26th. Luckily, Kyle did the right thing, um, sent out a mass email and changed it to where um, the dogs instead um, would, be, would have the 26th um, and be euthanized the 27th. One of the most upsetting ones was with uh, Snoop, who was set for the 24th, was initially flagged for the 19th for literally injuring its toenail, which caused blood. Um, and again, I'm willing to send you guys the evidence of everything. I would hope that you would review it and, and make some adjustments to policy. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Tom Arnold, <coughs> and then uh, Leslie Shepard. <clears throat> Some of this will be repeat from the last time I spoke. Um, again, I've been in public service for 38 years with the fire department in Phoenix. Um, one thing I've learned in that time that, again, change comes extremely slow through our RBO process. An agenda's put out. Um, people have the right to, but it takes a long time. And my, my question that I am, would like I would like pick up the podium a little I would like to find out a little more is that 
the agenda here, there's 90 some, uh, 90 some uh, things that you were asked to review. I'm assuming get with these people and find out the opposition. In, and does this come out every two weeks? Okay. In, in two weeks, can you do all that? Uh, when again, on the fire department, one change will take months. And the other thing I would like to understand is, and again, this, this is going back to when Obamacare, I was told there was 7,000 pages. And I was also told, again, I don't know how to verify that, but there were many people who voted on, yes, on Obamacare that did not read it. So, I mean, is, are these things gone through by you folks? And, and cons you know, carefully considered and take into consideration the opposition from these people before you vote yes or no. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Leslie Shepard, and then Jody Brackett. Tom, I can answer that question. No, they do not. So uh, most of the stuff you have in the agenda items, most of it, we don't see until we come here today. On Friday, when you post this, we do some research. Anything you put in within the last hours, obviously we don't, we, there, I mean, over half of them, we didn't even know were gonna be on the agenda item. So I just wanna clarify to everyone here that's new, that's how often we get to know ahead of time. So that's how much research you've done. And again, Bill Gates, you proved it at the very beginning when you said that Clint has not been able to look this over because he's not here this morning. Interesting. What I passed out to you was an article that is from the Maricopa County website promoting perverted books for children. Also on the back side there, I wanna show you the common law is the law of the land. Not your little decorum, not your little made up rules, not your little policies that you don't even uphold when it comes to agenda items and public commenting and the fact that you break the American Disabilities Act, that you do not allow people who have handicaps to have an ability to speak at these meetings. You say, sure they can, where are they gonna park? You don't even have parking out there for them. You're not set up for we the people. I want to remind you, this is what it says is, is what, what happens with treason. Treason is a betrayal of one's country, especially by attempting um, to disobey the Constitution. That's treason. You guys, children are suffering because of your choices. People go, how are children suffering? Every choice you make today affects their future. It did when you certified the fraudulent election, when how many people got up and said about how many things went wrong with the election and you didn't give a flip about it. You guys are gonna have a heavy day one day. It will be in front of a judge or in front of God, either way. Jody Brackett, and next will be Jeff Zink. I usually have something that I read from, but I'm speaking from my heart. Um, we have been fighting for over three years, all the boards. They've all been hijacked by mean, bad people. I don't know, under, I, now I understand what's going on. I totally understand. The only thing I don't understand and I don't know how you all can do it, is sleep at night. I really don't. That's the only thing I don't understand. How you can put your head on the pillow and be okay what you do to the people, all living things. I, it blows my mind. 
I have been through so many board meetings and you all run it the same way. Do you go to meetings and you read from the same book? Do you guys go meet together or do you Zoom and explain how to screw people? I don't understand how you sleep at night. We don't need machines anymore. Take away the machines and let's do it right and let's do hand counts and let the people speak and be, I just, I just still don't understand, please. And again, just like Leslie, you guys may feel that you're untouchable or think that you're untouchable. I don't, don't feel that way. Uh, fear God. I'm, I'm just telling you, my kids even know. Fear God. Jeff Zink and um, Don Hyatt? Don Anyway, Jeff Zink is next. Is Jeff not here? Okay, Don. Don does not wish to speak. Pardon? I just heard that Don does not wish wish to speak. Okay. Um, Just move forward. Uh, Karen Rice Rysand. I'm sure I didn't pronounce the last name correctly. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. My name is Karen Royster. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a elected PC in LD4. Uh, I came late to the meeting, so I don't know what happened at the beginning of the meeting. Kind of same thing I said before. I just ask that you guys respect we the people. Um, since 2015, I've been approached and asked to run for various uh, offices to represent we the people. I've been very prayerful, very careful, taking advice. Um, from a lot of people about different positions from school board to uh, running for the Senate, uh, LD chair, you name it, all across the board. I take it very seriously, so I don't just say, yes, I'll do it because somebody asked me to run for it. You all know what your, your reasons for taking the positions that you have but the reason stated for the position is to represent we the people. Mm -hmm. I just ask that you do that, that's it. However you conduct your personal life, that's fine by me. That's why I love it here in America. But please respect the people. It's okay to clap, it's okay to moan. This is America, that's all we're asking for. Just like you want respect, we, we want respect also. That's all I'm asking for, thank you. Thank you. you. Jerome Davidson. All right, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Jerome Davidson. I want to talk about the changes to the emergency process. And uh, I wanna make sure that those changes are clearly defined. What is an emergency? What, what makes an emergency an emergency? Who will have those emergency powers if it's not given to the state, if it's not given by the governor? I want to make sure that those powers are not given to anyone outside of the United States. That includes the UN. That includes the World Health Organization. That includes the CCP. I want to make sure that these new changes don't include taking away the rights, the, the rights of citizens, the constitutional rights and that they do not include any medical procedures, inhalations of pills, inoculations of shots, that they don't take away anyone's right to go to work. You know, these emergency changes. Want to make sure that these changes don't include the money of unelected billionaires like George Soros, Bill Gates, 
and all of these other people that are taking away our rights. So I just want to make sure that these changes are clearly defined. Who will make these decisions and what will define an emergency? Because we don't want to be under the control of entities outside of America. Thank you. Okay, next up is Mary Jane Ziola. And after her will be Ray Michaels. My name is Mary Ziola and I'm a precinct committeeman for LD29. I worked as a poll worker on November 20 in the 2022 election and watched the two tabulators reject ballots all day long and heard the angry voters who had to wait in long lines while they tried to have their ballots accepted. Some had to leave because they were working and could not stay to cast their ballot. At the end of the election day, we were told to gather all the ballots from inside the tabulators and put them into black bags and send them to MECTEC without counting them. Then we were told to gather all the mail-in ballot envelopes and put them in trays without counting them. Later, I learned this was a violation of Arizona Statute 16-564 which states the ballots from the voting machines tabulators must be counted before leaving the voting center. Whoever told us poll workers not to count the ballots is guilty of a class five felony according to Arizona statute 16-1004. Arizona law 16-602 states the poll list of voters who checked in and voted on election day should be compiled and counted to see if the number of votes match the number of ballots in the tabulators at the end of election day. This did not happen, which is a violation of Arizona law. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that fraud does not have to be proven when there are violations of election laws for the election to be set aside. 550,000 ballots were affected by Maricopa County not following the law. Therefore, the 2022 Arizona election should have not have been certified. Because of the fraudulent elections of 2020 and 2022 that the Board of Supervisors, the legislature, and the recorder's office allowed to happen, we have an illegitimate president who is allowing the invasion of more than 10 million illegal aliens into our country. They are coming from hundreds of countries with Chinese military age men and terrorists. We citizens are in danger and there could be an attack here in the United States, just like what happened when women were raped and families were executed in Israel on October 7th. We need to end the use of fraudulent voting machines and hand count our ballots for fair and honest elections to save our country. Ray Michaels, and next will be Kathleen Harrell. Thank you so much. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are all endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. May we never forget that all of our rights, our individual rights, liberties, and freedoms come directly from God and not from government. As you're well aware, this body has oversight and must follow Arizona Revised Statutes. We are a nation of laws and the laws should be applicable to everyone. The continuing bylaws of the Arizona, of the Republican Party of Arizona revised and approved on January 28th of 2023 state, <clears throat> the party is organized under the authority of the Arizona revised statutes. Under D, compliance with state law, these bylaws may not conflict with Arizona state law as set forth in the Arizona revised statutes. Article four officers, qualification for elected office, elected officers at the state committee and elected officers of members of the executive committee from the congressional district shall at the time of their election be members of the state committee. We make reference again to Ms. Gina Swoboda. The maxims of the law, again, 62C states, things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by any subsequent act. 62A states, a conclusion as to the use of a thing from its abuse is invalid. And 62B states, a repugnant act cannot be brought into being, i.e. cannot be made effectual. Thank you. Kathleen Harrell, and then Barbara, uh, is it Ratty? Kathleen Harrell, I'm here to speak about the documentary State of Denial 
denial.com, which covers testimony given in a trial concerning our 2022 election. MECTEC defined Maricopa County Tabulation Election Center. Runbeck defined private company that sells services to Arizona and 23 other states to manage elections. According to our constitution, private companies are not allowed in our election process, but Maricopa County sends the voter registration data to Runbeck. Runbeck prints the ballots, mails out the mail-in pa ballot packets, and then the voters return the packets either using the post office or a drop box. MECTEC picks up the packets at the post office or the drop boxes and takes them to Runbeck to be sorted. Here is one problem. MECTEC picks up the packets and they put them in trays, but they're not counted. The estimated number of packets is derived from the weight of the tray and the number of the trays. Chain of custody is gone right here. MECTEC does not count your mail-in ballot after you turn it in. I feel the post office and MECTEC are handling our mail-in packets the same way they handle junk mail. Just weigh it and move it along. MECTEC ex estimated count of 263,000 plus packets were delivered to Runbeck. Runbeck, the private company, amazingly found 298 plus packets. The difference is 35,000 packets of unknown origin that were entered into our election. Numbers must match. Stateofdenial.com, watch it. All the testimony Thank is you. there. Okay, Barbara and then Donald Adams. Barbara Ratty is my name. <clears throat> There are coordinated efforts to make sure certain people get elected. We are up against a machine that is determined to suppress the truth, and that includes the Board of Supervisors. They have the power to get rid of corrupt voting machines, and they refuse to do so. Watch the state of denial, Arizona election. An employee of Runbeck tells us they were allowed to bring their ballot packets into work and insert them into the inbound scan. Under Arizona law, you must return your packet to a designated drop-off location, and Runbeck is not one of them. Now we know Runbeck inserts ballot packets. Shelby Bush says this is the area where they can flood thousands upon thousands of ballots into the system without chain of custody. Mr. Blem tells us to look at Stephen Richards' emails to the Board of Supervisors one or two days after the election. Can't reconcile. The BOS knew this. How can the election get certified if the Maricopa County Recorder cannot reconcile the number of ballot packets received? Mr. Richer also tells that when the ballot packs are picked up at voting locations, they do not count the number of packets picked up, but they include a chain of custody form. That form has a quantity line item for ballot packets, and it is purposely not filled in. The issue of inserting a ballot packet at Rumbick is that there is no chain of custody. We don't know how many were inserted or taken out. They don't allow observ observers. This is where phantom voters can come into play. If there is no control of this process, how can we trust it? Watch the movie State of Denial, Arizona. It brings the receipts, the evidence, and more behind the scenes stories of Maricopa County 2022 fraudulent election. People used to think that their responsibility was just cast their vote and accept the results. No more. Our responsibility and our duty to go beyond that to get involved. We need to put pressure on the Board of Supervisors to get rid of unconstitutional machines and third party contracts. Thank you. Donald, Donald Adams. We need to reveal the truth, not suppress it. Donald Adams. And then Leslie Pettis. But when a long train of abuses and user patients pursuing invariably the same object invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of we the people of Arizona. 
and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system of government. The history of the present board, Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, is a repeated history of injuries and user patients, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over this county. To provide, to prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. I must remind you, gentlemen, that you have broken your oath to the Constitution of the United States of America and to the and to and to the Arizona Constitution, and a broken oath is treason. Uh, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. What are you going to do when they come for you? <laughs> Leslie Pettis. <clears throat> Leslie Pettis and then uh, Luann Savol. I'm Luann Savalt. I'm a precinct committeeman in LD 13. I know a little bit about rules. Let's talk about rules. On January 13th, the MCRC counted 2,500 ballots, hand counted, in one hour. There is video on that. I think you should look into that video and look into other proof that our elections have been stolen. I'm concerned about voting machines for several reasons. They're very costly, they're not secure, and there's no chain of custody, there's no counting. The only hope our country has to survive as a republic is to have honest elections. Go to saveourfreedom.us and bring our elections back to the people. You can initiate hand count, precinct level, and still have um, the ballots for people who, what do you call that? <laughs> ballots for people who can't be there, they're sick or overseas, like we used to do. This is the only secure way we can, we can make our election safe and secure and trusted. We need to get trust back into the American people that they, when they vote, it's going to be counted. So I have to trust you to help us with that and to do your job. It's a matter of life and death for this republic. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Jack Sellers and Board of Supervisors, Diane Barker. I'm in District 5, and I come to you not only in sweet, this is my favorite holiday, Valentine's Day, but there's also the bitter, too. And um, I'm in support, definitely, of 96 Call to the Public and listening to the people that have spoken today and in consideration, and you do document, I haven't seen it in all governments, that you have the right to respond to criticism, you can assign staff, and you can put the item on the next agenda or therefore for 
adoption, action, and consideration. And that's where we look to our government to serve our people. I would like to say that unfortunately five Marines are missing from the heavy lip helicopters out of Nevada to San Diego. We pray that they find them. It's in Les Pine Valley outside of there. The thing about war, we, we use the word win. No one wins a war. That is a, a lesson that we're going, our generation needs to learn. And the fact is we have friendly fire, we have, uh, which if you believe that, uh, and equipment malfunctions in the efforts of winning a war. And we, I come here in peace and I want us to start thinking that way. Okay, so now I was kicked out of a public meeting. It wasn't the Board of Supervisors, but it was the city of Phoenix. And the thing about it, it has to do with Valley Metro, the future of your referendum and so forth. It should be called citizens transportation because we're speaking up these entities that are agents, you need to control them. Sean Ryder. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I think you feel a lot of anger, a lot of lack of trust. So we're gonna switch over to like property. February 22nd, I went into escrow on a property. Um, prior, I, I worked for an ENR uh, 200 firm. It's in District 5, I-8 going right through it. Um, February 24th, met with planning, planning and zoning. Got it, they got excited. We don't have anything out there, let's do something. That's the feel I got. They told me how to get the um, drill for the water. The north part of the property was ADOT. Um, I was excited, ended up buying snoringcamping.com. But first walking in here, you got someone talking about cell towers, you got someone talking about billboards, perfect property for that, bringing revenue into the county. Um, property closed, 727, because of probate. Um, contacted, I went to the property, um, didn't have access to it because of the, the storms we got in the spring. After going, closing on the property, called projects, MCDOT, project department, they were supposed to open up a project, never heard back. Two months later, contact them again, never heard back. Got to the point where I had to go to the office, leave my information, email trail starting, never hear back. Call into Cynthia, I'm not even gonna go for the last name, Z-B-I-E-G-L-E-N. She sent out an email to some people, never heard back. Wasn't until I said I was gonna come here. And that's when I hear, when the guy, I talk to the gentleman, he says, we don't provide, you don't have access here. If you look at your parcel, parcel maps, you'll see the old uh, Highway 84 going through my property. You guys have two cell towers there. Like, there's access there. I'm just asking for help with the project, that's it. Thank you. Mind if I take his two minutes? I came all the way from Miami to speak to you guys. There's been four people all the way from Miami. No, I mean two minutes is all I'm asking for. I wouldn't do it. My name is William Still? Jackson from Miami, Florida. Yeah. Oh, he opened up the Pandora box there. Hey, good uh, good morning. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. My name is William Jackson. I'm from Miami, Florida. I've attended many many election integrity conferences. I've been to uh, meetings that actually have covered all the, um, the 
fraud that occurred here in our county and many other counties around this nation. You guys had a lot of fraud in your county. Now, if you're a sheriff or if you have any sheriffs here that are constitutionally bound, I think I just heard an election worker tell you about a felony that occurred right here. I heard it. And you guys didn't even react. And if you're a sheriff, or if there's any sheriffs, I don't know if it's private security or what you got, got over here. They're different from over there. But you guys, man, you took an oath to uphold the Constitution. When these votes are stolen by these Dominion machines, and it's not just Dominion, slap a name on it, it's the same software. I've seen all the data, guys. It's done. And you, and certified a, a fraudulent election, it's not too late. You guys have to uphold your oath. Otherwise, you're in dereliction of duty and violation of that oath. And that is treason, guys. This is serious, correct? Hey, thank you. I took my oath in the military. I still have 42 seconds or no? I mean, I took my oath in the military. I took it long ago. But I have never been relieved of that oath. I hope none of you guys have took an oath from the military. Because then, I tell you what, man, you're doubling down. But you also took an oath to uphold that seat you're sitting in right there. Please, uphold your oath. Look at the fraud that occurred in your county. Talk to your sheriff and hold the people accountable. Felonies, guys, felonies. Okay, board members and county super. <laughs> board members and county manager, would you like to comment? Nothing today, Chairman, thank you. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Galvin, are you on the line? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. And uh, I want to express appreciation for every member of the public who comes down to uh, participate in the First Amendment. Mr. Chairman, I'll be brief since I'm under the weather this morning, um, but I do want to highlight that I had the honor of being invited to the Jewish National Fund's breakfast last week. There were Mr. Chair, people. can you please direct the folks in the audience to quiet down so we can hear our can colleagues speaking? Anyone speak thank up you. again, I'll have you removed from the meeting. So please, be respectful. I think you will all agree that I've been respectful to you. The Vice Chair Galvin is homesick today, so he is. Yes, ma'am, because the rest of the population wants to hear from the Vice Chair. No, Thank you. They want to hear from me. Would you have her removed, please? Yeah, oh, Ms. Shepherd. Why is she being removed? Because she's being disruptive. Him too. Re recess the meeting. We'll come back. Recess the meeting. I'm going to recess the meeting until. Let's go. We'll come back. Wait for them to leave, then we'll come back.
a Delvin stay on? Tom, are you still online? Mr. Chairman, I'm here. Um, if I can finish my remarks, I'll be brief. I just want to appreciate the Jewish National Fund for inviting me to their breakfast last Same week. No, no, no. no. A people hey, Tom, it. Tom, we're just going to adjourn the meeting at this point. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Meeting is adjourned.